Welcome back to the channel. I've been having a lot of issues with my Alarmo, just random times where something will update and Alarmo will stop really connecting and working together. And because of this, I guess it's time to move on from Alarmo. So I thought, you know, what really makes sense? And I think what makes the most sense isn't utilizing something else that's an add-on or disconnected from Home Assistant, but let's use the core functionality here. What am I doing? Why am I gonna try to circumvent what's already in the system? So I'm gonna go ahead and integrate the manual alarm that's directly in Home Assistant and get that all set up here today. So I'll show you the steps to that, what that looks like, and how I have some of the automation set up so that you can also use the manual alarm if you're on Alarmo or any other you know, add-on or separate alarm type service where you can have the integration directly in Home Assistant into the core functionality and the core competencies of the system here and make sure that it works and you don't have to worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna start by going down here and going to the settings and I'm gonna go to add-ons right here. And then I'm gonna go into the studio code server. In here, I'm gonna open up the UI down here at the bottom. And then once this comes up, I can go in and edit my YAML. I'm just gonna go down here and add in a section for my alarm. Some things that are maybe uh, obvious and some that maybe aren't. So you need the alarm control panel set up here in the YAML file for the configuration. The platform is gonna be called manual and you can name the alarm. So I'm just gonna make this one called alarm. Um, I'm not gonna use a code right now, so I'm gonna get rid of that. We can have arming time, delay time, and trigger time. So the arming time is from when the alarm is armed till it actually will activate, you know, if there's a door open or motion sensor, that type of thing. Um, I don't need that, so I'm gonna make that zero. And the delay time is from the time that something triggers until it actually goes off, how long do you have? Um, and again, this is something that I don't really need, so I'm gonna make it zero so that immediately it's armed and then immediately um, if something's triggered, it starts going off as well. And the trigger time here is how long the alarm is triggered for. Um, four seems to be really odd. I know the default's like uh, 120 or something like that. I think that's probably a fair amount of time, a couple of minutes. By that point, you know, we have all the notifications out onto our phones and we can look at cameras and take whatever action we need. So I think two minutes is plenty for the alarms to be going off, um, particularly if it's a false alarm. That's uh, plenty of time to have, you know, all of those alarms going off. The next item here are the states for the alarm when you're arming. So armed home and armed away, um, you know, those are the two that, that I have in here right now. And I think those are um, really, you know, really key for me that that's all we really need. We don't need anything else. So disarmed, the trigger time is zero and the armed home, the arming and delay times are all zero in the example that I copied in. Since I'm not even going to change these, I'm actually going to just delete these. And there is a disarm after trigger. So once it's triggered and it cycles through that time period, um, you can have it go into a disarmed state. But I actually want to go armed, and that is the default. So that's a false there in the Boolean. So I'm not going to change that one. After thinking about that for a minute, I decided to put that disarmed trigger time down to zero so that it essentially never... Uh, triggers the alarm to go off and, you know, and uh, set off the sirens and that type of thing. So there's no time in there just in case anything malfunctions. I figure it's a safety feature here in this instance for me. Oddly enough, I needed to add in this code arm required to false. And that means that we don't have to put a code in to arm the alarm, which I thought was going to be the default considering the fact that we aren't putting a code in here to disarm the alarm. But apparently it's not, so I had to call that out as false here. And that really is all that it takes to set up the alarm itself in uh, Home Assistant. So not a whole lot of YAML code that's required here. Um, the configuration file that I use isn't very large. Unlike the automations, that one, I think it's like 5,000 lines of uh, YAML in there. But I'm not going to dive into the automations in the YAML. I'm going to do it through the UI here for the manual alarm in Home Assistant. All right, now that we have everything set up there and I restarted Home Assistant, we're going to go into settings and then we're going to go into automations. And in here, I'm going to create a new automation. 
And this one, we're going to look for a trigger of one of our devices. So I'm just going to do the front door and we're going to say if the front door opened and we have the uh, entity of the home alarm, if the state is armed. And you can see this is the alarm control panel alarm versus alarm O because I didn't make it much different here, but you get the idea and we want the state to be, we can say armed away in this instance is fine. If it's armed away, then we want to trigger the alarm control panel. And for this one, we would make sure that we choose the entity of alarm. And there we go. So this would be an alarm uh, automation where we would trigger armed away based on sensors. And obviously I'm going to go back through and add all the other sensors I want to utilize in here, but for security purposes, not to give too much away, I'm just going to leave it at that for today on the trigger alarm. I actually want to add the notification right in here because what this will allow us to do is pass along what actually calls the, the uh, triggering, triggering of the alarm. So we want to send a notification to all phones. And in this, we want to pass along the trigger. So what we're going to want to do is say alarm triggered by, and then once we drop in the trigger to state, and then the name of that, it's going to switch over to the YAML because it's not supported the UI. And um, we can just put exclamation point here for a couple of days, make it a little more fun here. And that will be all we need to do with this one. And we can actually take this and we can duplicate it. And I'm going to probably actually go back and delete this one um, later because what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to set everything up and then duplicate the completed version. But for this purpose, I'm just going to show you with that one sensor in there. And this is going to be switched over to armed home instead of the armed away on the condition. And then we want to keep everything else the same here and we can save it. And then this would be alarm triggered in um, armed home and we can have that complete. So now we have the triggering from armed home. We have triggering from armed away. Now what are we going to do with the trigger for the alarm system itself is the next item. So I'm going to create an automation and we're going to look for the entity state of the alarm. And if it is triggered, then we want to, let's see what we might want to do. Um, let's do the pantry siren and we're going to turn on our pantry siren um, and we can hit save. And this can be when alarm triggered sounds siren and hit save and right there we have that completed as i'm going to be doing some testing i'm going to disable that right now so i don't forget and um, wake everybody up because it's pretty late at night right now next i want to set up an automation to trigger the alarm to arm when everybody leaves so i'm going to create a new automation and we're going to say the zone. So here you can see when we have four people and they leave the home, then it's going to check to see if everybody is outside the home zone and make sure you have the building blocks of not here. Um, you want to say basically not, you know, any of the people in the home zone. So those are four different items you need to call out. So if, if anybody left, it checks to see if everybody's gone. And then essentially that's when the last person leaves, it does this. And at this point we're going to do an action and we're going to do the alarm control panel and we're going to arm away. And we will say the entity for alarm. So we're going to arm the alarm away when everyone leaves. And just like that, we have that situation. And now the next thing we're going to do is when anybody comes home, it disarms. I'm going to create an automation. And we're going to create a new automation, and the trigger is going to be the same location setup. So let me get that put in here. 
So now you can see when any of the four people enter the home zone, then it's going to disarm the alarm is what we want to select. So I'm going to pick control panel and pick disarm. And then we'll go down here, choose the entity and pick alarm. And it's as easy as that. When anyone arrives home, it disarms. All right. So the next thing we want to do is just notify everybody when the status of the alarm changes. That way they're aware. So if they're home, they don't trigger the alarm accidentally. So we're going to go into the um, new automation and we're going to go into the state of the entity and we're going to look for the alarm here. So we're going to say when the alarm is armed away, we're going to do the notification and we're going to do to all phones. And the message is going to be alarm armed away. No punctuation in this instance. And that's all we really need to do. So we're going to save this. I'm going to copy this and save this one. I'm going to duplicate it and we're going to do the um, armed home and the disarmed. All right. So when it is armed home, I want to noti notify everyone that alarm armed home. We can drop in armed home notification and we hit save and we can duplicate this and for this one we're going to look for the disarmed and we'll notify everybody alarm disarmed save this and just like that we have all the notifications set up all the triggers set up and the results of those set up um, I am going to probably go ahead and maybe do some other integrations utilizing some virtual switches and such, but to prevent giving away too much of our home security system and too much information putting it out there online, I'm going to stop it here and then I'm going to do everything else offline behind the scenes to make sure our security is the highest level it can be 